So let's talk about the um, diet and nutritional pro. I mean, you're very well known for uh, a plant-based approach for helping people basically take back their health. Can you talk about why the plant-based approach for heart disease, for cardiovascular health, uh, what, what science has led you down this path to being such a proponent of a plant-based diet and how does a plant-based diet help people that are either at risk for heart disease or, or already have heart disease? Well, I'm over 62 years old and it was a coincidence, but at age 18, I entered medical school at University of Michigan, sort of an accelerated program. And um, I did not like the dorm food. My mother gets credit for having brought me up on really good food. I wasn't picky. It was just not good. And there was a huge <laughs> salad bar. And I actually joked the first week of college, I guess I'm a salad baritarian. And there were a few really great restaurants in Ann Arbor that were salad bar places. And really within a year, I was, now I'd call it vegan. I just called it plant eater or something like that. My family calls me a rabbit, you know, before okay, they yeah, rabbit eater, you know. <laughs> you, yeah. you're, you're like a rabbit. And now they're all like rabbits too, because they realize it's, it's uh, changed their health for the better. But anyway, yeah. go on. <laughs> no, and I had a girlfriend at the time who had the same exact experience in Ann Arbor and she's been my wife for 40 years. So we've been doing this for 45 years, but I talked to nobody about it. You know, it was obvious. It's a medical meetings, medical dinners, uh, banquets that I was not eating the prime rib. Everybody else was. I trained in the South in Dallas, Kansas City, you know, semi-South where there's a whole lot of barbecue going on and I didn't participate in the ribs. Uh, so awkward moments, but, you know, got through them okay. It's really, I started practicing cardiology in 1990, and that year, Dr. Dean Ornish published an article. If you eat plants, if you meditate, if you exercise, if you don't smoke, you have a drastically improved outcome compared to those that don't follow that lifestyle heart trial result. And it struck me. I said, you know, I know all this. I don't smoke. I exercise. You know, I have some breathing faith and meditative practices, and I'm certainly plant-based for a long time by that point. And I bought his book, read his book, started recommending it to patients. And all we've seen since then, you know, is 98%, 99%. You're never going to get 100% in nutrition science. It's a tough science. But it's like a steamroller on and on. Diabetes prevention, diabetes reversal, whole food plant-based heart disease prevention, heart disease reversal, cholesterol reduction, blood pressure reduction, weight reduction, perhaps longevity, always a tough thing to study, but the blue zones are certainly what are called plant predominant uh, uh, sites around the world. They aren't strictly vegan. Uh, lots of people like me have been vegan for decades, lots of weightlifters and athletes and professional athletes, the movie, The Game Changers, Forks Over Knives, what the hell. So it just um, exploded. And, you know, even the U.S. News and World Report, not always the best place to go, but they do a decent job of ranking diets. I mean, they put the keto diet and the paleo diet at the bottom of the list of 30 or 35 diets. And you've got Dr. Ornish and others you know, right there at the top. And certainly the properly done Mediterranean diet, DASH diet. There's a new brain health diet called the MIND diet, M-I-N-D. They're all largely plant food diets. So it's an absolute flood of data. You'll always find one exception, skinny people doing keto who haven't had a heart attack, but a lot of people put their life at risk doing high fat, low carb, ketogenic diets. It can be done plant-based, but most people do it with meats and butters and all the rest. So it's just the science. I mean, the science, I would eat plant-based, but not teach it to patients if there weren't science. But it's because of the science that I write books and lecture and make videos and participate in webinars, seminars. And it, frankly, it's easy. It's easy to defend because the quality of the science. Um, is it true in cancer? Sure it is. I mean, uh, you know, will you find data that bacon prevents colorectal cancer or broccoli? Well, it's broccoli. Yeah, are you going to find a fiber rich diets, rich in vitamins, minerals, and plant based nutrients uh, are going to prevent cancer? Sure. Are you going to find that for uh, cheese and egg yolk and uh, sausage links? You're not. I mean, you know, always rare exception. So, um, you know, we know we want to pack the body with fiber rich, nutrient rich, 
naturally low sugar, naturally low chemical added foods. You want to be picky about the quality of food. But it's plant-based, 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 plant-based. 90%, 95%, 100%. I get the privilege of working a bit with Dr. Walter Longo, who's a PhD professor at University of Southern California, maybe the leading nutrition cancer expert in the world. And you know he's eating 19 meals a week, plant-based and two pieces of fish a week. And that's what he's constructed out of all the knowledge and contribution to uh, what's the best diet during chemotherapy and other really, really provocative research projects he's published. So, I mean, that kind of model just strengthens my um, you know, uh, focus for myself. There's no question, but when I teach and lecture to the public, but I don't yell at people. If you took one small step today of eating oatmeal rather than bacon, hallelujah, one apple, hallelujah, you know, baby steps for most, unless your health is really problematic. Thank you.